everybody, welcome back to Rain and Paws. I am Mitch, and today I am playing with an open cup paw. Now, I have already attempted this three times with no success. So this is one of my attempts. Didn't turn out too great. Uh, this is a, another one of my attempts. This was actually the second attempt I had with open cup paws. And I just don't have the right mixture of pouring medium to get a paw that I'm happy with. So after doing a little bit of research, a little bit of digging, I have found that I've been mixing my ratio incorrect. So I was watching Olga Sobi and I watched uh, one of her open cup paws and she lists her recipe and ingredients in the descriptions. And the recipe that she uses is opposite to what I've been using. So I've been using two parts of Liquitex pouring medium, or gloss medium, Liquitex gloss medium, tongue tied tonight, uh, and one part flow troll whereas I should be using two parts flow troll and one part gloss medium so that's what we're going to mix up now I'm just going to mix up a big batch of pouring medium for this and we're going to give this a go I guess so to start with let's mix up our flood flow troll and I think I'm going to use the American stuff for this because I'm running low on the Australian flow troll and even though I can readily go out and get myself some more of that, I don't really have the funds to do that at the moment. So I'll just be waiting a little bit longer. So we're going to measure two parts of American flow troll. Uh, let's do 200. Uh, let's do 300. 300, uh, two parts to one. Uh, I'm getting very confused. Uh, I, I won't fit 400 mils in here. So let's do two different batches. So two parts to one. So the easiest way to do this is to work in multiples of three because we add the ratio together to get three and then divide the parts. So I'll tear my weight, which means we're going to zero that out. If my scales want to behave. Hello. Okay, there we go. So I've got 200 mils of American flow troll and we want 100, uh, sorry, it's 200 grams and 100 grams of Liquitex Gloss Medium. Now it turns out that the flow troll is much denser per milliliter than the Liquitex Gloss Medium is. So that's why it's really important when you're mixing to either go by weight or by volume. It doesn't matter which one you do, but be consistent. If you're gonna measure everything by weight, do everything by weight. Don't uh, skip between each different one. So I'm going to use a stir stick, we're going to give this a mix, and I'm basically just going to pour over these other canvases that I have here, because I'm sick of looking at them. They're ugly. Well, they're ugly in my opinion. Uh, the two failed attempts over here, um, well I've got one failed attempt at an open cup, and the other one was a, one of my flip cups, and I do like the flip cup, but I think while I'm practicing, I'm just going to keep painting over the old canvases, unless there's one that I really, really like. And so just giving this a good stir, I understand that there's going to be bubbles. That's part of the deal when you mix fresh to order a la carte, a la carte paints. <laughs> um, if you didn't know, I'm a chef by trade, so I would try and relate everything back to cooking, which is what I know. So this is now pretty well mixed and we're going to mix up some colors so I thought I would stick with my blue and purple theme because I love those colors um, so I'm going to mix up some this little piggy pinwheel and this little piggy macaw because I haven't mixed up a an interference color for these pores yet so I'm going to be doing that for my base color I want to do uh, Amsterdam Prussian Blue Thalo with Matisse Indigo and I'm adding these two together so I get a really nice deep blue that is uh, semi-opaque um, because this one is semi-opaque and this one is transparent um, we should end up with a semi-opaque finish we just don't want to see much of the canvas through that I'm going to mix up Matisse Cobalt Teal and Amsterdam Venetian Rose so I think those colors will look really nice together and should give some contrast against this um, phthalo dark background. So to start with I'm going to separate my colors out and I'm going to place my background paint into the cup first and then oh no I have insects in my studio 
and they're hovering around all my lights and you know what that means that means that they're inevitably going to end up in my painting grr okay so adding a fair bit of paint here now a lot of people measure all of their paint um, in ratio with their pouring medium so some people will do one part paint to one part pouring medium now I always tend to think that that's a waste of paint because we know from doing the Shelley Art Bloom technique you definitely don't need equal parts of paint to pouring medium and that sort of stuff you very you need actually very little paint mixed into your pouring medium just enough to give the color that you're after so I'm taking that approach with all of my other paints here as well and just seeing how that goes and so far it's been working out really really well um, now the reason I'm pouring these into my cups first is so that just like pigments I can disperse them because I'm finding that certain uh, brands of paint and just certain paints from different brands uh, can tend to be a little bit grainy and they do not break down easily so it's better to add a little blob of paint in here mix it in first and then that will help it to dissolve into the main mixture you can see from these two colors here the Venetian rose is quite a, quite a fair bit thicker and um, holds its shape better than the cobalt teal which came out in a blob so this is more like a soft serve this is more like a thick shake almost so yeah that's something you want to be uh, aware of and I'm also going to try and stop saying um and ah uh and doing that a lot because I do find that I do that quite a fair bit in my videos and I really don't like it I have to edit a lot of that out <laughs> and I'm adding some this little piggy macaw to this container and this little piggy pinwheel to this one now pinwheel is purple in the container but when it goes over black it becomes a really nice shimmery blue color I'm just gonna pop these aside and I've got a couple of other little bits and pieces lying about that I'm just gonna pop away okay those are away now right now we can mix up our paint and I think I am going to add just a little bit of ivory black to this background color just to increase the opacity a little bit now there is a fair bit of paint in there and I need to get into the habit of wiping the nozzles of my paint tubes when I'm done because I find that I get dried crusty bits on everything so all right let's add a little bit of paint to each of these to disperse I guess now with my little piggies I am going to disperse in a tiny bit of gloss varnish and I'm going to be using Jo Sonia's gloss varnish for this which I have in a handy squirt bottle and I'm just putting in enough to make my pigment into a paste now you do not want to skip this step at all because your pigment may end up clumpy and it may not dissolve fully into your pouring medium you also want to be really careful when you're working with pigment because that can happen these containers are a pain in the backside because they have little ridges in the bottom that your stir stick can get caught on uh, but that also makes the fluid art co stir sticks perfect for these little containers because they have a very fine bladed edge that gets into all the cracks and crannies so just a quick stir with the varnish will disperse your pigment and make it ready to add to your pouring medium now adding this little bit of varnish shouldn't change the consistency of the pouring medium too much and we will need to adjust everything anyway so that all of our consistencies match whether we need to add varnish or pouring medium to thicken it up or thin it down okay so that just gets that started and let's do these ones as well and we will be making more pouring medium like I said this is just to get all the paints pretty much blended with that pouring medium so we don't end up with clumps and chunks in our finished pour which did happen with my flip cups I ended up with chunky paint because the emerald green was it the emerald green no it was the Australian sap green the Australian sap green was a fair bit thicker than everything else in the pour and I just didn't mix it properly and it came out chunky so lesson learned 
this is always the best way to do things. All right, and uh, what did I do this one? Let's see what nice deep dark blue color we get for this base. Oh, I love that. So uh, as I'm painting, I'm starting to steer away from just using plain black. Plain black is not really doing it for me anymore. So I'm trying to use just darker variations of color. So this uh, blue mixture is pretty much black, but you can tell that it is still a really nice dark blue. Okay, let's add some pouring medium to all of these and get this mixed up. Just adding roughly the same amount of pouring medium to each cup. And of course, a little bit more for our base. Now I am finding that I'm ending up with lots of different cups because I am trying different techniques. I'm ending up with lots of different cups with lots of different pouring mediums at different consistencies. So what I'm going to try to do from now on is when I'm mixing everything up, just mix all the colors up. It doesn't matter what we're using them for, just mix them up and have them on hand and then I can alter the consistency later. Just filling that cup with water, I'll let that soak. Let's give these a mix up and see what we are working with. Now one thing to remember is that when you're mixing your paints into a pouring medium, your pouring medium is a white color. When your paints dry, they will dry to the actual color that you have mixed up. You, when your pouring medium is white, it's obviously going to provide a background for your paints to sit on basically, but when they dry, they will dry to their full dark opacity. So you can see this dark blue here, it's gone pretty much pale and pastel, but when that dries, it'll dry nice and dark. All right, same with our pigments. It doesn't matter if they look a little bit gray in the pouring medium, as long as your pouring medium is clear drying, they should give the full shimmer and shine that they're designed to do. And if you are interested in using pigments in your work and you want to buy the this little piggy pigments, you can find those at fluid-art.co as well as these amazing little mixing sticks with the fine bladed edge that I was talking about. Fluid-art.co. The little piggies are the only pigments currently available that are specifically designed for fluid art. They are smaller in particle size, they dissolve much easier, and there are over 85 colors available now. Uh, Fluid Art Co. is an amazing place to get all your stuff. Uh, there's a link in the description for that as well. Amazing place because they sell silicon mats, they sell silicon molds, uh, Australian flow troll if you're overseas, um, pouring mediums, paints, uh, depends on which country you're in, depending on what products are available. Um, but usually when they release a product in one country, they release it in all of them. looking good and so my uh, paints are looking a little bit thicker than my other colors that is expected because I have paint in there whereas my other ones had that varnish to disperse it so I'm just going to use a little bit of water to thin these down to get them to the correct consistency uh, when you're mixing your paints you want everything to be the same consistency uh, for a an open cup pour, Olga mixes her base paint slightly thinner in viscosity to her colors. So that's what I'm going to be doing as well. Uh, and the way that I'm going to do that is get my colors vis uh, viscosity first, make sure that they are all the same, and I'm going to match it to my thinnest color. So whichever one has mixed up the thinnest here, I'm just going to make all of my colors the same consistency because it is much easier to thin a color than it is to thicken it. Let me just get rid of some of the unnecessary things on my bench. They're not going to jump off the wall back at me when I'm done. <laughs> uh, I do like to have a clean workspace, but uh, at the moment my bench is covered with testing and experimental mediums and cups and pours and all sorts of things. Cool bananas. So these are all the same 
thickness. Now let's have a look at our base color. That is very thick, so I am going to add a good squirt of water to this one. And that's looking great. So it's still leaving a trace on the surface of the paint. It is not dissolving completely straight away. You never want your paints to do that unless you're doing a Dutch pour which is the thinnest of the techniques. You never want your paint to just disappear completely uh, because then it'll be too thin. You still want it to have a little bit of body. Okay. I think I'm ready to try this open cut pour for the 75 millionth time. <laughs> uh, now what I will do is just off to the side, I am going to set up a drying area for my canvases once they are poured. Right, so we're going to do a small scale test first. I don't care if this one is level, this is just to check for cell formation, okay? So I have my chef's torch here, which I am going to regas. Alright, my torch is now regassed, and it's very important not to use this right away. If you're regassing your butane torches, do not click them to test them out because there can still be gas around it and you can start a little fireball. Yes, I've done it. <laughs> Don't ask how. I was testing things and yeah, it's happened. Okay, so just be very wary of that. So this is already a pretty dark color on here. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of this paint around the edge and then in the center because this is my little test piece. So just going to get the paint flowing. All right, now the ring. So I'm just using a cookie cutter here. This is a small ring because I want my rings to expand quite a bit and have total control over everything. Now let's pour in our cobalt teal first, followed by Venetian rose. A little bit of pinwheel. Then I'm going to do our background color. And then I'm going to do McCall. I want a little bit of separation in those sparkles. Cobalt teal again. Pinwheel again. Let's do Venetian, uh, let's do the background color. Venetian rose. and then McCaw. Okay, and then we're going to lift this up. And I'm just gonna drag that over the top. Okay. I definitely have the rings and things that I see, so I do have to work on my finishing here but this already looks a damn sight better than what I have been getting. So I am going to swirl this together and let's torch it. Get out those bubbles and create some cells. All right, let's tilt this and see how we go. So I'm just tilting in a circle to try and spread things nice and evenly. So my paint wants to go off the edge there, so let's help that along. Take it right to the edge, come back to the center. Let's take it right to that edge. Come back to the center. Down to this side. And then down to the other side. This is so much better. Thank you, Olga Sobi. I will link you to her channel <laughs> in the description below. 
um, filled in the missing piece. So I do like to try and create my own pouring mediums from scratch. And I have been using the Liquitex pouring medium because I've been finding that really, really awesome. And it dries super quick too. So now I'm going to torch again. Just very quick little torches. And this is totally bubble free, but this is a much, much better result than what I have been getting with the ring pours, like, or the open cut pours. Like, look at this result. <laughs> this was my first one compared to this one. Okay, so we're going to paint over this. Let's see if we can get a similar effect on that bigger piece. Radio. The other thing I need to remember is after I have um, done my pour, I need to take the bowls off the surface and flip them over so that they don't stick to my puppy pad here. Okay, let's coat the base. So this is a base coat or a flood coat. You would do this on any pore that is not a Shelly Art Bloom. For a Shelly Art Bloom, you would call it a pillow. And the fundamental differences between a base and a pillow are their purpose. So a pillow is house paint. The reason we use house paint is because it is springy, it is spongy, and it allows the paint to sit on top of it, um, which is crucial to getting your layers to hold up um, and getting your colors to float on top. Uh, you just don't get that with acrylic paint. I am yet to see anyone do a bloom just with acrylic paint that looks the same <laughs> as a pour without, without uh, house paint. So just torching the bubbles. First torch is to get rid of bubbles. Second torch is to get cells. Now let's put our ring in the center and you can see how big the canvas is compared to the ring. So this is an eight by eight inch canvas. My cookie cutter is like two centimeters across at most. So let's start off with cobalt teal. Then pinwheel. And I think I'm just gonna alternate sparkle paint, sparkle paint, base paint. None of the colors really took over in that pour, which is awesome. We can see all of them, which is exactly what you want. A little bit of sparkle in here now. And then I'm going to put a little bit more pink. Then I'm going to let it out. Cool. Let's do some more cobalt teal. Some more pinwheel. Now the pinwheel will look different depending on whether it is over the blue or over the pink or if it's over the base color, which is really awesome. And I think I'll do one more round. And I am trying to drizzle these from up a little bit higher so that they mix in the little open cup there. And I'm trying not to <laughs> spill any onto my design because a blob in the design would ruin this totally. And a little bit on top. Now what I'm going to do is grab a skewer and just give these colors in here a mix so that when I lift this up, there we go. Learning from past experience. Come on bubble. Pop damn ya. There we go. Okay. So now we don't have that swirl in the center. I'm going to torch for the bubbles. Torch the center and then let's tilt and see what we get. A 
off this edge back to the center let's go off this edge come back to the center I'm going to go straight back over to the other side and to the middle and back down to this side lovely all right let's give this another torch now there's no silicon in any of these on the next one I will add one drop of silicon to one color and let's see what effect that has okay let's grab our torch let's give this a blast bubbles and let's go for cells This really looks like some sort of nebula in space. I really do like the contrast of the dark blue base with the light pink from that Persian rose. Now I'm going to take my base paint and just drip some down those corners to make sure that they are covered because I can see that some of them are not. And down the side here, I'm just going to pat some of that on. Cool beans. I'm very happy with this. As an open cup, this is much more like what I was looking to get as my result. So increasing the amount of flow troll is the secret. So I'm going to give this another torch here in the center to try and open up some more cells. Just here. And we're going to put this one aside to dry. And now let's work on the last canvas okay we got one more now let's add silicon to one color which color should we choose I'm gonna go with the cobalt teal I think now where is my silicon oil so let's add one drop Two drops of silicon oil that's it and watch the difference that it makes to our painting so two drops of silicon oil just in the cobalt teal and I've just given that maybe 10 15 stirs now let's use up almost all of our base paint keep a little bit to scrape into our open cup and it doesn't matter that we don't have enough base paint to cover the entire canvas because we'll just use up whatever's left in our little cups here to make up the rest of the bulk. So let's start with the cobalt teal. Inwheel. Persian rose. Macaw. background blue where's my skewer let's give this a stir to get those colors mixing then let's layer again cobalt teal pinwheel <laughs> Persian rose twinkle uh, not twinkle <laughs> what is it McCaw I don't know why I said twinkle there and background blue again a little stir to get things mixing and let's lift get everything flowing out and I'm gonna torch here already you can see different cells forming in this one just from two tiny little drops of silicon oil.
<laughs> I am loving this. This is phenomenal. I haven't used silicon oil in paintings for so, so long. Um, and I've forgotten the, uh, the amazing effects it can give. But I've also seen that you don't need silicon oil to create these amazing effects either. So I'm going to finish up with one more round of each color. And then the last little bit of this blue. We're going to give this the old flip and lip. Give it a bit of a stir to mix everything together. And then give it a little curve. So at least that cell there in the center looks a bit more natural like it's meant to be there. So let's tilt this out. And I do now have plenty of paint on here. There's not particularly one area that I want to keep over another. So I'm just going to tilt out and see what result I get. Take this time to just wipe the sides. The paint will continue to fall off the edges. Gravity will pull that down. But I do find wiping the sides is going to encourage that to happen. And I'm just going to pick up some paint that's come off the edge here. Dab that on. Who am I kidding? I'm just going to wipe these sides. Paint these sides later anyway. <laughs> okay, uh, let me wipe my hand. This is way cool. Now let's give it a torch, get rid of those bubbles, and that's going to encourage some cells to form as well as this silicone underneath breaks through the surface. I don't want to overdo it, but we've got amazing cells forming here. Oh, so much prettier. So, so pretty. You just want to be careful that there's no silicon touching the canvas because that will show through. But there's a lovely patch here where McCaw is sitting on top of everything and it looks like, uh, like a cloud or something just sitting over the top of everything with that interference and it looks absolutely amazing. Okay, so I'm going to let these dry and I will show you the dried results in the next video. I don't know what I'm going to challenge next, um, but I can't wait to try another technique. I think this is a great success. There we go. Looks beautiful. There is still quite a little bit of paint on here. I could have tilted more off, but you can see that having a slightly transparent base gives you these really cool mixings of colors here. And there was no white used in this. It's just that phthalo blue over the cobalt teal. Makes it look really, really cool. Okay, so I'm setting this aside. Let's see how this dries. Hopefully it dries okay. And remember, I have to take my plates off the mats so that they don't stick as they dry and I can reuse these. Okay, so thank you for joining me for another experimentation video. I hope you're enjoying this little series. I really am enjoying learning how to do the pours that most people start with. I dived headfirst into my pouring journey with <laughs> Shelly Art Blooms. I dived right in the deep end. So this is all a big learning experience for me, but I'm really, really enjoying it. So guys, don't forget, as usual, if you like what I'm doing here, like and subscribe. Follow all the people in my description as well. There's a fair few amazing artists in there too. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.